Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum! Last time! Simply put, our team became champions of Sinnoh! This time! We're back in our hometown. Let's go downstairs and see our mother who has undoubtedly been worrying much too long about us. Emil! Barry came looking for you a little while ago! I don't know what it was about, but he was shouting about you needing to get on a ship in Snowpoint City. Snowpoint City. You know how impatient he is. He was gone before I could ask. Anyway, how's it going, kid? Is your project with Professor Rowan coming along? It is indeed coming along. It's coming along very nicely. Coming along so nicely, in fact, that we just might have to show him just how well it's coming along in the very near future. Okay. Awkward story. There are 210 Pokemon in the Sinnoh decks. We are missing one. <laughs> Which one are we missing, you might ask? Well, uh, it's not something super common. Yeah, not super common, just something that I highly recommended and sang a lot of praise of. South of Veilstone City is this collector, whose name is Douglas. What you doing today, Douglas? Ha <laughs> ha, oh, you're raising your Jolteon, I see. Okay. This, this guy has not only a Jolteon, but a Vaporeon on his team. This is the one Pokemon held by a trainer of interest that I did not go over during the main series. Out of 210, I'd say that's a pretty good track record. I failed less than half of a percent of the time. And if I had to make a mistake on something, well, okay, I guess maybe that was going to happen at some point with there being so dang many of them, even though I was trying to be diligent. Oh, and he's got a Flareon on his team as well, but I did say it was something that I sang high praise of, so you knew it wasn't going to be that from that description alone. After doing all that, we can go and see Professor Rowan and have the happy ending that I teased at the end of the last video. Yes, sorry if that was a bit misleading. I just didn't want to ruin the moment, okay? I think you understand. Besides, I was honest about it as soon as this got started. Hmm, Emil, I've been waiting to see you. You've met every kind of Pokemon there is in the Sinnoh region. This will help immensely with my studies on Pokemon evolution. Look who it is. Greetings, Professor Rowan. It's been a very long time. I'll tell you, Sinnoh certainly is a long trip from Kanto. Of course, it means meeting new Pokemon. There's no distance too great for the likes of us to travel. Oh, if it isn't my old colleague, Professor Oak. I should have expected as much from the world's authority on Pokemon. We used to joke, where there are Pokemon, you'll find Oak. It's good to see that hasn't changed one bit. Professor Oak, let me introduce you to my young assistant. This youngster filled in every page of the Sinnoh Pokedex for me. Ah, well, very glad to meet you. As you've heard, my name is Oak. I've been here I've been hearing a great deal about you from Professor Rowan lately. He's been exuberant in praise about a fantastic young trainer. Ah, I see Professor Rowan's enthusiastic in text, but not in person. I know plenty of people like that. I see that you live up to no, that you've surpassed his praise. You've also got an impeccable sense of timing. You see. I had an errand to run for Professor Rowan on my visit here. He asked me to bring the data for the National Pokedex, you see. So, since you're here, let me upgrade your Pokedex with the National Mode. After all, there are many kinds of Pokemon in this world of ours. We now have the National Pokedex. This is every Pokemon from every region, so we're no longer confined to just the Sinnoh Dex. Yeah, it won't be easy to complete. I'll make an honest attempt on our behalf. Wait, no, Rowan, I agreed to nothing. Do not rope me into completing this now, too. No, I draw the line at the center next. So, Oak is telling us about the Pal Park. If I remember correctly, it's at the end of Route 221. The Pal Park has a special system that attracts every kind, every imaginable kind of Pokemon from every region. Well, except maybe Johto. I've come to in, I've come to make certain the system is operating properly. Emil, you should make an effort to visit the Pal Park too. Oops, I'll be late for my meeting if I don't get going. Okay, it was a pleasure seeing the both of you. Bye now. Off he goes, busy as ever. That's really all you're going to say about it? Oh, you also have a reward for us. The Poke Radar. This is a strange, strange item. I remember around the time that Diamond and Pearl were new, a lot of people were confused as to what this thing did, and all I saw were people complaining about how useless it was. If I may demonstrate it, we'll go out onto Route 202. If I stand in a grassy patch and use it... Wait. Wow! So he doesn't even give it to us with a charged battery and I had to walk another five steps. Yes, yeah, so you have to walk around for a bit to charge it up. It will reveal to you where the encounters are. 
this is fine and good. Why would you ever want to see this? You know, couldn't you just use repels? There's a couple of special functions it has. One are that there are many, many Pokemon you can only see if you have this. It's meant to help you complete your Pokedex, and it causes new Pokemon to become available in grass patches around Sinnoh that were not obtainable before. Second, is that if you run into the same Pokemon with it again and again and again, chances being higher the more steps away the patch of grass is, recommended that you use Repel so that you don't run into stuff on the way, you can get chains going up, getting the more encounters that you possibly can. The higher the chain, the more chance you have of finding a shiny Pokemon. People do this to get shiny Pokemon of every species that they want so they can get all shiny teams and whatnot. Personally, I have done exactly what you were supposed to do, done it for countless hours, gotten really good at it, and never once have I ever gotten a shiny from this method. I'm just that darn unlucky with them. I really am. So, um, yeah, that's what the Poke Radar is. That's not the only new thing that we can do here in Sand Gem Town. If we go to Dawn's house, talk to this girl. Oh, hi, Emil. There was news on TV saying there's a massive outbreak of Pokemon. That'd be great for filling up your Pokedex. Check the TV. Uh, is this going to tell us? No, I don't want to know about the daily lives of trainers. I don't care. Oh, uh, <laughs> Seth bought a Pokeball. Let's report it on TV, everyone. Oh, he bought 15 Pokeballs. That's 15 times more exciting than it was in the first place. <laughs> is it the shopper is intent on buying up every Pokeball in Sinnoh with those magical fingers? Seth has magical fingers, you said it, not me. Uh, oh, she just tells us. Route 215, there are a whole bunch of drowsy there. There are many species you can find through Pokemon outbreaks. These change every day, and she will tell you where they are and which species of Pokemon there are. Needless to say, between the Poke Radar and the daily new... I want you to do better than my sister, Dawn. Apparently, I'm not the only one Dawn is condescending to if her little sister talks that way about her. Anyway... There are a buttload of new encounters that have all become available to us at the same time. Because the Poke Radar encounters are generally low level and not something you'd be using on a team, they come in very late, and those swarm encounters are each and every day, and there's multiple new encounters on every single route, I'm not going to give them all bios and have a 45 minute episode of nothing but bios. I'm sorry, but that's just not gonna happen. So instead, I will show on screen right now what all the new encounters are in case there is anything that you personally want, in case you want to complete your Pokedex. Personally, I knew a lot of people who made it a personal challenge of theirs to get every Pokemon they possibly could without using the Pal Park. Professor Oak was just telling us about that, and we are almost there already. That is the very next thing that I wanted to talk about. Yes, I'm going to the Pal Park. That's kind of why I didn't want to be interrupted by you. Here is the man. Ah, Emil, this is it. This is Pal Park. F Pokemon from around the country can be brought here. In other words, Pokemon from places like Kanto and Hoenn. But not Johto! This place happens to be where you compete to see how quickly you can catch those Pokemon. It's good to see you've come to join us for a visit. Let me make a gift of this trainer counter app for your Pokech. The trainer counter app tracks the Pokemon radar's rankings. I plan to be in Eterna City for some time. Being here, I should make the best of my time studying the Pokemon of the Sinnoh region. This new Pokech app, let's take a look at it. I am so sorry, but the sight of Bidoof on a first place pedestal with nothing else around it as if it was the only one that competed and won by default is some amazing imagery. <laughs> and the thing is, if it were Starly, it wouldn't be funny. I'm sorry. I, I've i kind of come to the conclusion that, at least to me personally, Bidoof is one of those things in this universe that is inherently funny. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's talk to some of the NPCs around here. Um, she wants a Pokemon that does nothing but eat and sleep from the Pal Park. So, Pal Park, if we're to talk to this guy, he will tell us that we can demonstrate our Pokemon catching techniques to our peers. Yes, I'm Emil. Yes, 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 I'm a hotshot, and they put all the great rumors about me. I got news for you, buddy. They're all true. Well, except maybe the one about me and Barry, but hey. Um... Yeah, I can honor you with the honor of me being in your catching shows. I'm only the champion of Sinnoh and all that. Pal Park manual, just situations like this. Uh, okay. I don't need to go over any of this. I'm just going to simply explain it as we take part in this. 
What this allows you to do. Professor Oak was saying that at Pal Park, you can catch Pokemon from anywhere in the world. Except Johto. Yeah. What this really means is that it will allow you to migrate six Pokemon per day from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, or Leaf Green. While doing this, you are timed and you are trying to catch your Pokemon as quickly as possible. They can be in different habitats such as in the water or in the grass. And since I had to show off this feature at some point or another, I thought it would be nice if we could see some old friends again. And as such, yeah, I think you see where this is going. If you have not watched my Pokemon Emerald Let's Play and you don't want any spoilers for my team members in that series, you might want to stop the video right now, just letting you know. These are not going to be mainstays in the series, but I thought it would be nice to see them all over again. You might be wondering, hey, that's kind of unfair that you only get six park balls for this. Aren't those the same thing as Safari balls in Gen 2 and in Heart Gold Soul Silver? Park balls are the same as Master Balls, except they are gold and silver and have a crystal band in the middle. Yeah, they weren't very subtle about the foreshadowing back in the day. Not like they've gotten any more subtle with those Hoenn remakes. And in making this first video of the after game, my main goal was to go over the National Dex, the Poke Radar, and the Pal Park. All helpful tools for you if you want to fill in your Pokedex. And that's what we've done here. From here on, we're just going to be going around the Pal Park catching the Pokemon that we have migrated. Now, while doing this, there is something that I've been wanting to address. A lot of people have been asking if I would bring over my old team and if I would battle using them. I do want to bring them over, and bringing them over is going to have some purpose later on, but out of not wanting to spoil an older Let's Play that I've put together so long ago in case somebody wants to go back and watch it, they're not going to be mainstay members of the team, but they will be used for something later on. But as we're going around catching them, there is a certain one member of my team that warrants special mention. This guy. <laughs> I knew that I'd have to make this video at some point, and I knew that it would be a little bit weird when I did, and him just sitting there looking all smug, picking his nose didn't make it any easier. We've had a lot of explanation in this video already, and the National Dex, the Poke Radar, and the Pal Park were pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. So, for the rest of this video, there's something a bit more serious that I want to talk to you about. Usually, I try to make things very upbeat and try to just spread my enthusiasm about games and do all those things. That's very much what I like doing, and it's what I've always liked doing, and I've gotten less and less shy about being me over time, and I've been able to do that in recent years. I never for a moment thought that I would when I was a kid, but, you know, I feel like I can definitely be comfortable doing that now. This slacking, as many of you know, is named after my cat, Teddy. And as many of you also know, during the production of Pokemon Platinum, we have lost our dear friend, Teddy. It was during Platinum that this happened. He was the reason for some of the delays that occurred during this series, and I felt really bad about it. But it was just that in the moment, I didn't feel like I could make fun videos, so I didn't want to force it. It was definitely the time that out of anybody that's been a regular part of my personal life that's passed away, he's definitely been the one who was there the longest. And I know that this might not have been as difficult as people losing other family members and whatnot, and I'm not trying to make it sound like I'm special. The reason why I'm telling you this is because, like I said, growing up, I was not a very social person. I felt very uncomfortable being me. I felt like I was wrong somehow and like I didn't have a place out there. And not only was this the member of my family that had been with me the longest passing away out of anyone that I've known that has passed away, this was the first time something like this happened that I had you guys. And the experience of having viewers that could send me their positive energy and tell me what they felt of the situation and yeah, even telling me that they miss him and that him making occasional appearances on the channel, either as some kind of picture or photo that I would upload, or 
the subject of some kind of joke or being the nickname of this slacking or heck maybe even barging enemy when I'm recording and me yelling at him to get out it was a very unique experience that empowered me and I feel like was one of the best things I could have had in this situation but even though I want to thank you for everything that was sent my way everything that was told to me everything that was done for me in this time by you guys the thing that I want to say in all this is telling you how important expression is I know that it can be hard to say how you really feel about things I know it can be scary and make it can feel like you don't belong someplace I've had plenty of that feeling throughout my life but the fact is I see so many people every day that seem to believe that they are powerless, that they really won't make a difference because they're one person. And more than anything else in my life, this was already something that I strongly believed in, but more than anything else in my life, that experience of sharing the news that Teddy had passed away with all of you, if there was anything good that came from losing Teddy, it was seeing just how powerful expression can be. In this amazing world where everything is interconnected, where you can talk to anyone at any time, and I think it's such a shame that there are people out there that use this to make other people feel terrible, to hurt other people. It has tremendous power, and ironically, the people that I see hurting other people with this ability are those who believe that they are powerless, are those that feel that they don't make a difference. And in a lot of cases, I feel like that's the reason why people do it, because they feel like it won't matter and they might as well make themselves noticed somehow. What I'm trying to say is, don't forget to express what you feel. All of us, I'm sure, I know definitely I have, wished at some point or another that they had somebody who would be empowering or who would say something like this and you can be that person that you wished you had. But, yeah, that's, I know that this was a lot heavier than other things that I've said, but it's something that I want people to know and want people to remember, and it's an experience that I wanted to share with as many people as I could. And I felt like now that this video was more or less done and we were just going around catching the team members and this was the point where we'd be seeing Teddy the Slacking again, this was the point where I wanted to talk about it. Anyway. I think that's about it for now. We got a figgy berry for catching everything there. That's a much brighter note, a really funny sounding item to brighten the mood. You can get all kinds of items here. I'll show on screen right now what they all are. They depend on your points. But yeah, with everything done here at Pal Park, we have a lot more tools that are allow us to complete our Pokedex. And next time on Pokemon Platinum, we'll continue our second journey through the Sinnoh region, seeing what else has changed in the time we've been away on our journey. See you guys then.